Hi, this is Greg Beckett, Motivational Hypnotist, and we're here for another episode of Time to Get Unstuck. And today I have a wonderful, wonderful guest, and I think it's going to be pretty interesting, uh, Jennifer Escalera. Um, before I introduce her completely, I would like to uh, talk about our sponsor, HypnoThoughts Platinum. So HypnoThoughts, you've heard me talk about HypnoThoughts Live before, which is every August in Las Vegas, where there's a thousand hypnotists somewhere approximately or more or less, um, who come together and share community and classes and all that kind of stuff. HypnoThoughts Platinum, which will be February 28th, 29th, and March 30th. That makes it a leap year, doesn't it, Jennifer? Isn't it a, uh, when there's a 29th? Yeah. Anyway, yes. so it's, yes. that, it's three days in San Diego, and it's a little bit more, I'm sure it's going to have the same, this is the first year for HypnoThoughts Platinum, and I'm sure it's going to have the same community idea, but in a smaller scale. They're not, they're looking for people that already have a practice and are looking to go from good to better. Like you already have a good foundation and they have six um, really interesting speakers who are, are, are wonderful at what they do in the business. Uh, Steve Ream, um, David Snyder, Melissa Tears, Kelly T. Woods, Ken Guzzo, Jason Lynette. Did I get everybody? Melissa Tears, Jason, Ken, Steve, Kelly T. Yeah, I did everybody. Oh my God, I had it by my mom. So um, if it's in San Diego, if I didn't mention that, um, take a look at htplatinum.net when you get the opportunity to uh, check out all the information. And I appreciate them for sponsoring us. And so check it out. I know you haven't been to it and I haven't been to it because it's brand new. So, <laughs> so we can't really tell you exactly, but I know it's the, everything's really quality. So I'm gonna let that go. Thank you sponsors. I want to introduce uh, Jennifer, and we know that time to get unstuck is really about moving forward. And Jennifer and I have known each other for a number of years here in Los Angeles. And Jennifer um, is a metaphysical intuitive. She's a trainer and she's a spiritual mentor, which is a lot in a mouthful <laughs> uh, and a soulful, I guess. It's, it's a soulful is what's... <laughs> yes, that's uh, great So I want to welcome Jennifer. Thank you. And typically I toss out the word, but I have to say, uh, again, time to get unstuck is about moving forward. And oddly enough, I'm wearing a green shirt. My niece came to visit me and we went shopping because I have to have different shirts for the show and stuff. And I'm very simple, I think, in clothing. Up here, maybe not so much, but here I'm pretty simple. <laughs> I think I'm simple all around. But um, And she's like, uncle, you have to do something different. You got to wear something, you know, I said, I don't wear green. No, no, I look good on you. And, and I always talk about how small changes and willingness, these are some of the words, just small steps to make a change. So here I am wearing green that opens up my world. Um, and it's part of the small change. And along with willingness, which we've done that word before on the show, the word for Jennifer today, which we, when we first spoke to come on the show, it didn't really resonate with me. And I said, no, and who am I to say no? I don't care if it's the show that I happen to host for all of you, but the word was intuition. <laughs> and here she is, a spiritual intuitive, and I'm saying no to intuition, and she's somebody that I know. What the heck is wrong with me? So I am open and willing for us to talk about intuition. So Jennifer, I hope that was a good enough <laughs> thing yes. for us to go. I, I'm going to start with a question. Usually I just drop it, but I'm going to... What does the word intuition mean to you? Oh, okay, sure. Is that fair? Well, yes, that's a great question. So first, I just want to thank you, Greg, for having me here on your show today and <laughs> for having this topic and um, to being in this openness of the word intuition, the energy of intuition. So I've been studying and educating myself about intuition as well as working one-on-one -on -one with clients and applying it into my own life. And from what I understand is that intuition is one of our six senses. So it's a sense. It's something that we're all born with. And I'm sure you've heard of that before, but I really want people to understand that it really is something that we're born with. So just as we have a sense of touch, a sense of taste, a, t a sense of smell, a sense of sound, a sense of sight, we have a sense of intuition. So when you have, yeah, so when you have, okay, so when you have that, that gut instinct, it's in your belly, 
or something keeps repeating in your head or you see symbols, synchronicities, um, patterns of things that um, are not a coincidence, but they're coincidental to our consciousness, right? But once we start opening up our sense, it's a skill, this sense, we apply that, wow, this is something that is part of our inner guidance. It's an inner GPS that allows us to create and manifest a life that supports our highest and best good. Okay. <laughs> I, I, have, I have a lot to say. Which I, Absolutely. I, well, you know, we, we, we've, we've had conversations before just as colleagues and stuff. Yes, yes. Uh, and so words are really important. And here we are doing a show where we start with a word. And sometimes words don't resonate. I know intuition for me or whatever, but it turns out that that word for some people is very, and I'm going to use that really scientific term, woo-woo. Uh -huh. <laughs> right, but you're telling me it's actually something we have. Now, that it's not, it's not woo-woo, it's scientific actually. Correct, it's a okay. sense. Right, so, but I need to use a different word. This is where I got caught up, right? Mm -hmm. And hopefully um, people watching the show, whether it's this one or another one, they'll be able to put another word that really sits for them if a word doesn't really work. Does this make sense what I'm saying to yeah. you? Yeah, yeah. The word for me is a knowing, knowing. Mm -hmm. A certain knowing within me, where you might call it intuition, I call it a knowing. Like something's Correct. just not right here. Something, I, you know, uh, even even an intuition, let's say intuition slash knowing when we're, I, I'll do that. You can do intuition, you know, but it's just for me to, because knowing that word is so much more for me, maybe because I don't have that skill or that muscle worked as much to really be seated in that word. Does that make sense? Yes. So that knowing is something's not right. That might even be that intuition I'm going to use that you need to change because something's so repetition that you don't like. Mm -hmm. That little blip. Mm -hmm. or, or down here, where I like mm -hmm. to talk about the blow. <laughs> mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Does that make sense? The way I'm it, kind of it reframing it for me? I'm reframing this for me so I can really have this it, it makes sense. And it makes sense to someone who has a five sensory, meaning that you use all of those five senses, your consciousness, your analytical mind, to process language. When we use our intuition, it's higher consciousness. It's beyond just logic and analytical. We go beyond a, a sense of uh, trust. We go into this skill of knowledge and wisdom that leads us to understand the sense of intuition. Does that make sense? It does make sense, and it's and, and again, uh, um, because you're what we're what, what I'm learning is I don't have any. I'm working with the five basics. You're Though, working with the five basics, and most people do. But am I working with the five basics to understand the sixth? Because I I do pretty well with clients and things like that in knowing what's going on. Mm -hmm, right. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and. And, I, and I've always thought, which I may be completely, I'll say, okay, I'm wrong. You know, that mm -hmm. we get stuck when we have an intuition feeling knowing. I'm going to add knowing because that's how I can, you know, that we don't follow. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That we resist. Correct. That we ignore. And it just becomes more painful and painful. Right. So it's much easier to stay makes, in. Yeah. It's much easier to stay in control in the knowing. When we don't know something, when things are not in our control, if we can't see it, if it's not tangible, if it's not real in the sense of this 3D dimensional world that we live in, we start to question it. And that's when we take ourselves out of higher consciousness, out of our intuition. So the skill of being a hypnotherapist, 
-hmm. someone who is a healer because I feel like hypnotherapists in a form are forms of healers, right? right? We sit and we listen, we provide space for our clients to be able to process deep, deep wounds, deep unconscious, subconscious blocks. And there's a knowing that we start to connect to our client in that moment. We start to understand something that they're not saying. That's your intuition. That's why you're really good at what you do because you intuit, you connect to that person's story, you connect to that person's life and you start building on what they're not saying and then you ask the right questions. That is an intuitive question. You are using your knowing, you are using your knowledge, you are using empathy to be able to connect to someone and really help them reach a discovery that has been blocked for them. I also feel, and I also call it, this is what I teach my clients, is that the unconscious is intuition. It's the higher self. It's parts of us that we have either forgotten or uh, we've blocked out because of either a trauma or a stress, um, something related that won't allow us to remember. But once we start relaxing the mind-body, we can start to intuit into the, the sense of our memories. We can get into it. We can get into it, yes. <laughs> so then I have a question yes. about someone listening. Yes. This is all new to them. So it's mm -hmm. not, I'm going, oh, well, I think this perspective is new to me, which I appreciate, right? Yeah. And I think sometimes when we talk about something that's, because I know the thoughts and the knowing that I, I use that word, but I'll use intuition, is things that I, I just know. I just, which is intuition, right? Correct. It's not, and it's not tangible evidence of that people have to have all the time. So how do someone that's watching this show or just learning about who they are and those feelings that they've never really been maybe courageous enough to feel or take steps towards, is there an exercise or is there a way for them to build that muscle or for me or anybody to increase that muscle of understanding? That yes. sixth sense or that intuition sense? Yes, there's a couple. Um, the easiest way is to do some form of relaxation techniques. We really want to allow the brain activity to slow down. Once we allow the brain activity to slow down, it allows our nervous system, which is our fight or flight instinct, to relax and calm down. And therefore, we connect our mind and our body to be in harmony with balance. Once we relax, we let go of analyzing or needing to know what happens next. We can call in and just simply ask, okay, I'm here. Someone told, gave me an exercise. Now what? What, am I, what? what can my intuition show me right now? What can I sense? And just without controlling it, without analyzing it or judging it, this would be called like mindfulness uh, exercise and mindfulness meditation where you're just becoming the observer. You can ask your higher self, your intuitive self, okay, give me a sense right now. Give me a visual. Give me a smell. Give me a taste. So you're actually applying all of your other senses. Mm -hmm to begin to sharpen in that moment. So that is a very concrete, specific example of tuning into your inner guidance that will allow you to be able to receive that information. So you're relaxing, you're closing your eyes, whether it's in a chair, on a couch, on the floor, maybe you're in a parking lot waiting for in a someone. Bus. You know, subway. And then you relax. Well, I don't know bus or subway because, you know, there's other people. And safety is important. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's the number one, being able to do any of this, right? <laughs> Which is a show on safety coming. But anyway, um, and then you ask for one of the five senses. Yeah. So that you start connecting the six to the five. Correct. And 
and it's all about perspective on that too. Like you go, oh, I did smell this or I did feel this, but you're also creating it. You're creating it. Correct. You can visualize because not everyone has a dominant sense of visualization, mm -hmm. right? But let's say that you do. Let's say that your uh, visual sense is really good. You can visualize, you know, something in the future. Like what is something that you've been thinking about wanting to create or manifest? You can ask that higher self, the intuitive self, to guide you into this vision. What do you need to see? What are the paths or what are the steps along that path to show you how to reach into the future where you go into a limitless time and space? So intuition. I, I had um, Gila Zach on uh, not too long ago. Someone can find the episode if you want to see it. We talked about imagination. Mm -hmm. right? Yes. So you're talking about visualization and I go, oh, imagination. Which imagination. is a bit, you know, it's more of a norm term for someone that's new to all of this, right? And so I asked her, and I'm going to ask you the same question. So visualization, does it come from here or does it come from here? And you know, when I talk about here, I'm talking about the core soul. I believe this is where we live. This is the boss. This is the employee. And we're trying to train the employee to help the boss do what needs to be done because this is that, that core part of us. And where, you know, anybody can say that God, like Buddha, Jesus, you know, whatever anybody believes, mm -hmm. of course, you know, and our emotion and feelings from here. So that's the question is, do you think, imagine, not imagination, visualization is here or here? It's both mind and heart, <laughs> mind and heart are two sides of the same coin. Oh, so exactly what you just said. This is the CEO. This is the boss and this is the employee. They work cohesively together. So you are working with the mind, but it's higher consciousness mind that creates imagination that creates visualization visualization, which gives you a higher knowing, which gives you clarity on something that you've been stuck on. A lot of my clients will say, well, how do I know what's the difference between fear and, and intuition? How do I, I'm, you know, because I need to make a decision about my relationship or whatever. Like, I don't know, I'm scared, but is that my intuition telling me I should be scared or is that my fear telling me I should leave, you know, or the other way around. I mean, you know, so it's your intuition is always going to lead you down the path that serves your interest. It's not going to set you up or lead you down a road or even an imagery that is going to be harmful or hurtful to yourself. It's always going to lead you to the right way for you in that moment. So, the in-between of you getting the result you're looking for and you asking the question, that in-between, that's where the mind comes in and it begins to, or I'm sorry, that's where the heart comes in and it begins to trust the information that you're receiving. Let's be clear. When you say heart, mm -hmm. are you talking about physically the heart? Or are you talking about the core soul center? The soul center, okay, correct. Or whatever it is someone wants to call that which where we live. Correct. And that's intuition. The soul could be also be another word for intuition. Again, if we get too stuck on language, because I'm big on language too. You yeah, know? I know, I know. That's why you if wanted we, intuition. Yeah. <laughs> if we get stuck so much on intuition versus really what we're seeking. Feeling. Um, Feel, feeling, feeling. Right. you know what, and I, this question has been popping through as we've been talking is why do you think, what's your opinion? How do you feel about this? <laughs> why people don't allow themselves to feel? Well, that's a, that's a pretty fair, you know, because we're talking about feeling to have intuition and all of that sort of blocked and we have a lot of things that are, I think, purposefully distracting us that we allow to distract us because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. everything keeps winding faster and faster and faster. And so, yeah, 
I can come from someone who is an empath and who most of the people that I work with are empaths or highly sensitive people. Um, and so from my personal experience and from working with clients is that we've been taught early on from our childhood, oh, you're too sensitive, you're too emotional. Why do you cry for everything? Why do you hold on to so much stuff? So we get programmed into this negative reinforcement that what we feel isn't approved. So we unconsciously start creating these agreements with ourselves. Well, I better not feel. I better go into the mind because the mind is where we control things. Or that's not that's, right. Right. That's the same. Boys safe. don't cry. Boys don't cry, right? Yeah. So ev yes, even like in our society, to show emotion whether it's man or woman, to show emotion, it's often seen as something, uh, you know, negative. Or it has, or I'm going to say has been, because has I been think we're all unstable. working towards being more open, right? Right, right. And I, I wonder if it's, if, it's, uh, if it's because it's so uncomfortable. It's uncomfortable. For the people that are having to view it or deal with it. And they'd Correct. rather suppress it rather than maybe the kid or the adult or something that's having that cathartic expression that the other person's like, oh, I don't know how to deal with this. Oh my gosh. We're already done? <laughs> well, we're not quite done, but oh my gosh, that was. <laughs> I can go for days with this. <laughs> oh my gosh. We might have to be back because I thought of another word that I'm not going to spill the beans on, but. Um, can uh, I just say really quick about oh, your shirt? Yeah, sure. So, so the fact that you picked a green shirt for today's episode, for today's show, green, mm -hmm. which is a heart-centered color, it's also in the vibration of communication, um, empathy, love, and these are forms of intuition. So mm. I feel intuitively you picked the color if your niece or I forgot who you said. Yeah, my niece. Yeah, yeah. If she's the one who picked it out and suggested it, because the fact that you agreed, that's still your intuition. Even if you weren't the one who actually picked the color, you intuitively picked that color for today's. Uh, and I was show. willing to make a change and get out of a blue shirt. <laughs> right, right, right. Into green, which is not, it's out of my comfort zone. As simple as a color sometimes is out of my comfort zone. Yes. And it's very interesting. I appreciate you being here and um, sharing your information. And I learned a lot. So okay. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to learn how to use the word intuition more with confidence instead of having to mask it with the word knowing, which is more acceptable. <laughs> Does that make sense? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's more sure. acceptable. Uh, um, yeah. I want to make sure that we let people know how to find you. Okay. So where, 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 oh, did you have something else that you wanted to say? Um, you know, one person who came to mind about using our intuition or guided imagery mm -hmm. is Napersek. I forget her name. I mean her first name. Napersek is her last name. But um, she's really big into guided imagery and how to work with your intuition. So I just want to have that as a resource. So okay. anyways. Cool. Okay. Cool. cool. And I, I want to <laughs> say... You know, there was a lot of, uh, I, we had, I had, not you, I had hesitation on using this word, putting on this shirt, whatever, and change comes from leaning into that fear, because it's all fear, whether it's a slight, that hesitation is a slight fear, a slight whatever, and it's leaning into that that allows us to open doors to change. So That's with that said, how could people find you if they're looking for change? Ooh, good. <laughs> Same way. Same <laughs> <Thank> way. <you. laughs> well, I'm most active on uh, social media, on Instagram, and uh, you can find me at Mystic Living School. And on Facebook, I'm at uh, The Mystic Living School. And my website is themysticlivingschool.com. Well, thanks. And I want to say one more thing about you is that she does also sound baths privately, or if you have a space that you're interested in in Los Angeles, or, you know, work something, just contact her. She does great sound baths. I, I've oh, been. Thank, and it's you. Cool. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Um, thank you so much, Jennifer. A big hug to you from this oh. camera to that camera. 
And thanks everybody for watching. And until next time, you know, keep leaning into a little bit of that fear and see what happens. Make that Ooh. willingness and change. So Yay. thanks a lot. <laughs> Bye. That's awesome. Bye.